In the world of marine engines, few stories have been as dramatic, controversial, or ultimately transformative as the rise and fall of Evan Rood's Ficht engine. Marketed as a groundbreaking advancement that would change the future of outboard motors, the FICHT system began with promise and ended in catastrophe. What went wrong? Was it flawed technology, corporate mismanagement, or just a case of rushing too fast into the future? To understand the full truth, we need to go back to the late 1990s, a pivotal time for the boating industry. The United States Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, had recently introduced a wave of stringent emissions regulations aimed at reducing air and water pollution from marine engines. Two-stroke engines, once beloved for their lightweight and punchy performance, were suddenly facing extinction. Their design, though efficient for power delivery, was inherently dirty. They expelled unburned fuel and oil directly into the water and air, contributing to environmental harm at alarming rates. Manufacturers were under pressure to adapt or face regulatory doom. While most of the industry leaned toward developing heavier, cleaner four-stroke motors, Evinrude, then owned by Outboard Marine Corporation, OMC, chose a riskier but more ambitious path. They saw an opportunity to keep the two-stroke tradition alive, but in a cleaner, smarter form. That vision came in the form of FICHT direct fuel injection. Ficht technology was the brainchild of German engineer Dieter Ficht, whose vision was to revolutionize the two-stroke engine at a time when it faced extinction. His solution was deceptively elegant, yet technically profound. Inject fuel directly into the combustion chamber at extremely high pressure, timed with near millisecond precision. This innovation fundamentally changed the combustion process, allowing a traditional two-stroke engine, long criticized for its dirty emissions, to burn fuel far more cleanly and efficiently. Gone was the need for pre-mixing fuel and oil, and gone too was the wasteful exhaust of unburned hydrocarbons that had plagued two-stroke designs for decades. Seeing enormous potential, Evan Rood, under the flag of Outboard Marine Corporation, OMC, licensed the technology and swiftly began adapting it for marine use. Their engineers integrated Fixed's direct injection system into a new generation of two-stroke outboards. The company wasn't just trying to meet new EPA mandates. It was attempting to redefine what two-stroke power could be. The ambition was staggering. Deliver dramatically reduced emissions, improve fuel economy, a significant drop in moving parts, and still preserve the fierce torque, instant throttle response, and lightweight design that boaters revered. On paper, the fished engine appeared to be nothing short of a technical triumph. It seemed to deliver the best of all worlds. It complied with the newly tightening environmental standards without the weight penalties and mechanical complexity of four-stroke engines. It was sleek, compact, and ideal for high-performance marine applications. Even more enticing was its promise to maintain the snappy, adrenaline-fueled character that had long defined Evan Rood's identity. When the Fisht engine debuted to the public in the late 1990s, it sent ripples of excitement through the industry. Dealers raved about its potential. Brochures touted it as the next great leap in marine propulsion. Customers, eager for a modern, efficient outboard that didn't sacrifice power, flooded showrooms with pre-orders. Within Evinrude and OMC, the mood was euphoric. They believed they had outmaneuvered not only the EPA, but also their rivals, pioneering a future that others had yet to even imagine. But as we now know, the future would prove far more complicated. Unfortunately, the reality was far more sobering. Almost immediately after the highly anticipated launch, the reality of the FICHT engines began to unravel. What had been marketed as a leap forward in marine propulsion quickly revealed itself to be deeply flawed. Within months, customer complaints poured in from all corners. Engines that idled rough, misfired unpredictably, or sputtered under load. Some motors wouldn't start at all, but these early warning signs were just the beginning. The most terrifying reports were those of literal engine fires, blazes that erupted mid-operation, sometimes while boats were still on the water. Investigations pointed to critical failures in the design and manufacturing of the fuel injection system. Poorly sealed injectors, fragile fuel lines, and heat-sensitive components combined to create a hazardous cocktail. Fuel leaks became common, 
In worst case scenarios, those leaks found an ignition source and the results were catastrophic. For boaters who had placed their trust and their families on the water, this wasn't just a mechanical issue, it was a safety crisis. Very quickly, the Fitched engine shifted from a symbol of progress to a case study in engineering overreach. Lawsuits began piling up as customers demanded accountability. Dealers, once flush with orders and optimistic projections, found themselves inundated with returns, complaints, and angry phone calls. The wave of warranty claims rose to an unsustainable level, threatening to drown what little financial stability OMC had left. For technicians and marine mechanics, the Fitch system was a nightmare. Its internal workings were complex and unfamiliar. Unlike traditional carbureted or even early EFI systems, the direct injection layout required a completely different diagnostic approach. Yet the training and documentation necessary to work on these engines were minimal at best. Mechanics were left fumbling in the dark, unable to diagnose or reliably fix the mounting issues. This further eroded confidence at the service level and alienated a customer base that was already losing patience. Behind the scenes, OMC was in no position to manage the crisis. The company had already been on shaky financial ground, and the fished rollout had been a high-stakes gamble. In their desperate rush to meet looming EPA emissions deadlines and to outpace competitors, OMC had pushed the fished engines to market before they were truly ready. Many of the most glaring engineering problems had been glossed over or ignored entirely. Quality control in the factories became erratic. Some engines left the assembly line in decent shape, while others were disasters from the start. Field repairs were cumbersome, costly, and often ineffective. The people who had embraced the promise of cutting-edge technology were now stranded with unreliable, dangerous equipment. Instead of transforming the industry, the Fitched engine had become a cautionary tale, an ambitious innovation crippled by poor execution and corporate desperation. By the year 2000, Outboard Marine Corporation was in dire straits. The Fitch debacle had sapped its credibility, drained its finances, and left a loyal customer base feeling betrayed. In December of that year, OMC filed for bankruptcy, leaving thousands of boaters with unsupported engines and dealers holding unsellable inventory. It was one of the most spectacular collapses in the history of recreational marine manufacturing. But that wasn't the end of the Fitch story. In 2001, Canadian power sports company Bombardier Recreational Products acquired the Evan Rood & Johnson brands, along with the remnants of OMC's technology portfolio. BRP immediately recognized the potential of direct injection, but understood that the Fitchett name was now radioactive. They went to work correcting its flaws, investing millions in research and development. They rebuilt the platform from the ground up and rebranded the new generation of engines as a E-Tech, a name that would eventually restore Evan Rood's place among the marine elite. In 2020, BRP stunned the boating world by announcing the discontinuation of all Evan Rood outboard engines, including ETEC. The company shifted its marine strategy toward boat packages with Rotax inboard engines, effectively closing the book on over a century of Evan Rood innovation. For many, it marked the end of an era. Today, if you bring up the fixed engine in a boatyard, you're likely to hear everything from expletives to laughter to long-winded stories about catastrophic breakdowns. It's a name that evokes strong feelings, and for good reason. Fitch promised the future and delivered a fiasco. And now you know the shocking truth behind one of the most infamous engines in marine history. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Your support means a lot and helps us keep creating more content like this.